You only get so many chances at achieving the ultimate glory, and the Mile High City's championship window is as wide open as it may ever be. Nikola Jokic averaged a 30-point triple-double in the Western Conference semis, a series in which he also became the first player in NBA history to average a 40-point triple-double on 60% shooting over a two-game span. Additionally, through the first 10 games of a postseason, the Joker became the second NBA player ever with 300 points, 100 boards, and 75 dimes, joining merely Oscar Robertson in 1963. With a healthy second and third option in this year's playoffs being Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. who weren't available during last year's first round exit, things look a lot smoother in the Rockies, especially considering Malone has a ton of depth off the bench to work with. Former Brooklyn Net Bruce Brown dropped an eye-popping 25-piece off the bench in Game 5 to give Denver a 3-2 series lead against the Suns. Rookie Phenom, who's already proven to be one of the most explosive dunkers in the game, Christian Brown, was somehow snubbed from an all-rookie team, despite being the last first-year player remaining in a playoff rotation. Whether it's the Brown Bros off the pine, the meticulous offensive prowess from the two-time MVP that makes it all tick, an underrated safety on the back line of your defense in Aaron Gordon, who's tied with MPJ for the highest plus-minus in 2023's playoffs, a 40% playoff three-point floor spacer like NBA champion with the Lakers, Contavious Caldwell-Pope, mentors like the timeless father figure Jeff Green, Move on my spot. Sorry, Dad. or the Blue Arrow plus MPJ being back and better than ever this year, the well-rounded Nugs seemingly have an endless supply of ruthless firepower. Stay tuned to see why it's such a make-or-break year for fans in Denver. Right before that, just 12.7% of you watching are subscribed, so please subscribe. Also, splash thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and follow at Hoops on Instagram and Twitter. Thank you kindly for supporting this platform. The Blue Arrow is ready to shake the nickname of Bubble Murray. Man's ready to be called Playoff Murray. In response to Ernie, Chuck, and Shaq referring to him as Bubble Murray, Jamal said post-game on TNT back after game one of the second round, quote, I don't know how many times I gotta prove myself for y'all to believe in my game or believe in what I do or my health or whatever it is. I can only just keep doing it and keep trending up and proving everybody wrong, end quote. Jamal has backed up those words with nearly the exact same averages that he posted back in 2020's bubble playoffs of 26 points, 7 dimes, and a playoff career best in both steals and rebounds per game. Along with keeping up his reputation as one of the NBA's premier shot creators, new elements to Murray's game have also developed. The Kitchener, Ontario native's improved post-up game has made him an even more well-rounded bucket getter. Murray's leading all guards in this year's playoffs in points scored from the post, an element in his bag when looking back at the highlights from over the years that's been pretty underrated. Speaking on his post-up game recently, Murray said, quote, I grew up playing the five because I was always taller than everybody. I watched a lot of MJ. I love Hakeem, Dirk, Brandon Roy as one of my favorite guys. I take a lot of things from a lot of guys and try to give my own touch to it, end quote. To close out the Suns in Phoenix by a merciless 25 points, albeit who were without Chris Paul and DeAndre Ayton, JM27 was questionable with an illness before the game, but toughed it out to drop a monster stat line of 26 points, 4 rebounds, 4 assists, 4 steals, while making 4 threes. In terms of the Nuggets as a team overall, not only are they extremely deep, but of course, like any team that makes it to the Final Four, they're extremely well coached as well. Mike Malone's system features one of the more well-orchestrated offenses in basketball, one which features some of the craftiest, advanced, and well-mixed-up playsets. Malone's preached to his team all year that they can't be satisfied with the success they've accomplished this season or even in the playoffs. They were 3-0 against the defending champion Dubs during the regular season. In terms of against their other potential third-round matchup, the Lakers, Denver also had a double-digit victory this season against LA, ultimately splitting the season series 2-2 with King James and company, although LeBron didn't play in one of those L's, and of course the purple and gold post-trade deadline are completely different. 
since all of Denver's matchups with LA took place before the deadline, it's kind of hard to truly stack them up against the Nugs. Either way, Denver's conference finals matchup will obviously be far from a walk in the park. One could argue, however, that whether it's Golden State or Los Angeles, that this powerhouse number one seeded Mile High City ball club would be heavily favored to advance to the finals in either of those matchups. With KCP Bruce Brown, the man whose jam was just named by the NBA as Dunk of the Year, Aaron Gordon, in addition to the big three of Jokic, Murray, and MPJ, the Nuggets have six players averaging double-figure points per game in 2023's playoffs. The Warriors have four of such players, while the Lakers have five of them. Additionally, Gordon, Porter, Murray, Jokic, and Brown make up the top five players in plus-minus throughout the first two rounds of this year's playoffs. In fact, Denver has six of the top 15 players in 2023's playoffs in plus-minus. While the Lakers only have one of them, the Warriors have three of them. More noteworthy, Denver's plus 101 point differential in this year's playoffs is a plus 31 point gap between the second-ranked Boston Celtics. That's a bigger gap between those second-ranked Celtics and the number four-ranked Lakers. Regarding top-heavy talent, having the best player in a series is what ultimately matters most when it comes to winning in the playoffs. And while Curry and LeBron are all-timers, the greatness of Nikola Jokic may very well exceed those two. While the Sambor shuffling phenom isn't the best defensive talent in the world, Jokic is in the prime of his career, unlike Steph or LeBron, and his ability to manipulate opponents offensively is so special that it makes up for any lapses he has on the other end. The Nuggets front office has also done a tremendous job at surrounding Nikola with the proper defensive pieces which have allowed him to stay within himself on this end of the floor. Gordon and Porter have been lengthy, versatile presences for a few years now, but the free agency pickup last summer of Bruce Brown Jr. and the 21st overall 2022 draft selection of Christian Brown have gifted Malone's rotation with a few other mobile, high-energy stoppers who've also helped out Jokic. And it's not like Jokic is the all-time bad defensive center that many make him out to be. Nikola's not the most elite drop coverage switch defender or rim protector, but his 108.6 defensive rating this postseason is fifth best among centers, which I know isn't the best, but that ranks the Serbian beast merely a few decimals behind much more reputable defensive centers than him in Boston's Al Horford and Robert Williams. Here's the reason for why the window for Denver may be more wide open than it'll ever be. In addition to why it's so critical the Mile High City's basketball team takes care of business this year, quite simply, general managers and fan bases only have so much patience. Since Coach Malone was hired, Denver missed the postseason from 2015 to 2018 while their young talent developed. However, from 2019, which culminated in a second round exit to the Portland Trailblazers, up until this year in 2023, Denver has now qualified for the postseason in five consecutive campaigns. They've been heavily injured for a few of their playoff shortcomings, and these playoffs will be their second conference finals appearance paired with when they made it in 2020. But with this specific core of players, if the Nuggets fail to get it done for a fifth consecutive season, major changes could very well be made with the team's top personnel. That said, Murray is under contract through 2025, Jokic is signed through 2028, and MPJ is signed through 2027. The Nuggets will likely get several more chances with this core, regardless of what they do over the next month. However, while you could argue this is just another step in the journey, a core of players under a specific head coach that fails to get it done for this many years will likely see major changes if they fail to make the finals or achieve the ultimate glory. While the pressure is on for fans, players, coaches, and execs for the mile high, their number one seeded powerhouse, without a doubt, feels strongly about their chances to win eight more games and hoist the Larry OB.